Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to the 1894 podcast. Welcome back to yet another episode. We are very sorry we missed last week's episode where it was after the West Ham game, the home game. Uh, we missed that one. Again, apologies. However, however, we are here. We're back. And it is the match review for the game against Nottingham Forest in the fourth round, fourth round, fourth round of the FA Cup, where Bristol City were held, Bristol City were held, to a nil-nil draw at home to Premier League opposition at Nottingham Forest. As always, I have Matisse with me. Matisse, how are you doing on this impeccable day? I'm I'm doing better. I'm doing better. Yeah, I've been a bit ill recently. So yeah, it's good to be good to be back. Um yeah, shame we it's missed the everyone's Ill. Yeah, recently just you know I was ill as well. I was not feeling good yeah. going into the forest game. I was oh, terrible. Mm. Um yeah, slowly moving away from, from the winter period, still quite cold, a lot of winds. Um yeah, shame to miss that that West Ham podcast, but what that was a a brilliant game. Uh, we were both there. I mean, you made a vlog as well, and it's just nights like those, incredible. But yeah, another another FA Cup round against a Premier League side, and another draw, and another forced replay. Um, this time we are we'll be going away from home though, so that should be interesting. But yeah, definitely us being held to a to a goalless draw at Ashton Gate because I felt like I mean we'll get into the game, but we were dominant. And just again, lack that clinicality at certain points. But I, I, there was a lot of positives as well. Just the way we played, a lot of confidence um, built into the game well. And yeah, we made Nottingham look pretty, pretty poor. I mean, they aren't a top Premier League side. They are. They have been in poor form recently. I mean, we know they just about got past Blackpool. They're quite low mid table as well, um, looking towards that relegation battle. But still. Their, their Premier League side, and we we made them look pretty pretty bad, or we can say we, we we just played well ourselves. Before we talk about the game, um, are we going to address address? Ad, I, was, well, I can't speak today. Are we going to address the elephant in the room? The elephant in the room. Do you, do, do, do you want to guess? Do you want to guess? Do you want to guess? What do you normally talk about on the show? The man, the man, the myth, the legend, Alex Scott. So for anyone who's tuning in for his first time, um, I don't blame him, but he loves Alex Scott maybe a little bit too much. I love Alex Scott, but we need to move on. It's like a... Well, we save him for the end of the episode. We save him for the end. Yeah, but I'm not going to the end of the episode because I don't want to waste my bloody time at the end of the episode. I might just waste my time now and talk about the game. So are we going to address the fact that he's an unbelievable footballer and we got our pants pulled down at 25 million, but, you know, <laughs> Bristol City's for you? I mean, he just proves it day in, day out. Um, it is against another championship side, um, but still, I mean, he is incredible. Goal assist, Bournemouth absolute thrashing, uh, five, all first half goals. Um, but yeah, they got, they got the deal done and Alex Scott, I think he got man of the match or joint man of the match. Um, I think it was David Brooks not that much, but yeah. Anyways, yeah. Anyways, he um, was he was incredible. So, yeah, great, unbelievable player. Still wouldn't get into our starting eleven. I'm joking. Mm. Of course he would. Um. Anyways, this was the starting eleven for Bristol City. Uh, to you can see it if you're listening. Uh, if you're watching, oh, if you're watching on the on the YouTube, um, it was Max in goal, back five of Ross McCrory, George Tanner, Rob Dickey, and Zach Viner, uh, and Campering. I genuinely am atrocious. I cannot speak. Um, yeah, that was the back five. It was Matty James, who was the captain in midfield, alongside Taylor Gardner Hickman, Jason Knight, and Alice Mametti, the two number 10s, floating off Tommy Conway. For Nottingham Forest, it was Matt Turner in goal, um, who cannot kick a ball to save his life. Uh, I was told that before the game, and yeah. The eye test backs that up. He cannot kick a ball. Nuno Tavares, Murillo, Andrew Omabamadele and Gonzalo Montiel. World Cup winning Gonzalo Montiel at right back. Ryan Yates. Do you remember when he scored the penalty to win the World Cup for Argentina? Yeah. yeah. yeah and he scored the penalty to win the Europa League for Sevilla last season as well. So penalty king um, and winner. Uh, Ryan Yates, uh, who's the captain, I believe, uh, 
and Aurel Mangala in midfield. Uh, Nicolas Dominguez, Danilo, Callum Hudson Adoy off um, looking impeccable, <laughs> invincible Chris Wood now up top, who's scoring every game. Didn't score t- yesterday, but you know, uh, that's because he's up against uh, Zach Kleiner and Rob Dickey. Um, so, what were your thoughts on the on the lineup? Obviously, no Scott Twine, no Joe Williams, no Mark Sykes. Um, those are the three big in, big names who we're going to miss, who we were going to miss. Um, and obviously the long-term injuries as well. Um, Atkinson edging closer back, hopefully. Uh, but yeah, what were your thoughts on that lineup? Yeah, obviously, like you said, we there were forced changes. Um, it, is the is it because he got a yellow card in both round three games, or does it have to do with the championship as well? I'm not sure if they're are they related well, or for, Joe, it... for Williams. Yeah, for um, Williams. Yeah, I think it's just two of any any two games he misses. If it's two, if it's, if it's just two. Two games he gets a yellow card. It doesn't matter if it's a replay. He's he doesn't play. I think he's suspended afterwards. But um, it's it's just for cards in the FA Cup, not not in just, the just 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 for just for the FA Cup. Yes, not for the league. Yeah, the league would yeah. be separate. I think. If they, I think the league and the EFL Cup are intertwined, but the FA Cup is separate. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, obviously that was um a forced change, and yeah, Sykes still not um completely back, and like you said, yeah, Scott Twine is cup tied. Um. But yeah, we've moved into this kind of three, four, two, one in a way. Um, so we've kind of moved away from this four, two, three, one that we had before. Um, and we have this kind of well, three slash five back with the, the wing backs of McCrory and Pring. So we were always gonna think that McCrory was gonna replace Tanner, kind of, but kind of fit into the same team now. Um yeah, we've got a situation now where now when Sykes is back and fit, where are we going to play him into this side? Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, it's obviously, I, I don't know exactly how, how I fare with this. I mean, I'll see how it goes. I, I'm usually, I'm not a fan of uh, three backs with wing backs, but um, we obviously play brilliantly uh, against West Ham um, with that. But yeah, other than that, formation players no real surprises i wouldn't have changed much bell still i wouldn't have preferred him and everyone else i'd say yeah it's just 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 two quick points um i've always said it's not how you line up in a formation or the structure um it's how you play it um you could play five at the back and you could put four men you could put nine men behind the ball and strike is the only one pressing and that's very defensive and that's obviously going to be playing one way or you could have fluid wing backs who are intertwining and you know making it a four in midfield and then pushing the four pushing the right uh, the two wide centre backs and up and then making it hard for the opposition and compacting uh, compressing the spaces uh, basically everywhere across the midfield. That could be another way. That's very aggressive. That's you know um, complete contrast to the other one. So it's not and it's the same for a four at the back as well. It's literally it's it's all about how you play. Um, a player formation not the formation itself there's no formation i'd call defensive or no formation i'd call attacking it's all about how you play a formation um and there's a good point you make about sykes actually because i think with sykes i think he's a very good technical player uh very good you know on the ball i think he's very he's similar to mametti in that way uh but with a little bit more end product um so i'd possibly because at the moment it's knight on the right mametti off the left in the two number 10 positions I'd swap them and take Mimetti out and put Sykes in, uh, basically, just right now. Uh, Sykes should hopefully be back for Leeds. Uh, commentary will be too soon. Maybe Leeds, um, if we're being uh, optimistic. Uh, but, yeah. Who's, who do we have after Leeds? Uh, Middlesbrough? Uh, we'll probably have Forest midweek and then Middlesbrough on the saturday yeah away from her yeah yeah so then possibly forest in the next game um so yeah maybe i'd do that would you maybe put sykes in that position in the number 10 or he could also play at right wing back and maybe push ross mccrory into right center back but that would deter his attacking yeah i i really like um ross mccrory and how how he i think i thought he was quite brilliant yesterday um when he was on he obviously came off it's not completely ready for a full 90 minutes, I'd say. Um, but I thought, I think him in that position is great. I mean, the physicality holds the ball well. He's got a bit of technical ability as well. Didn't didn't pay off every single time, but you could see that he, the way he cut inside as well through the midfield, 
he he brings in attacking threat and obviously defensively as well um just his stature and he, well yeah it's, it's what he did for um Aberdeen as well so yeah I, I'd agree with si- uh, Sykes if he came in yeah put Knight on the left hand side or maybe it'll be Scott Twine then on the left and Sykes oh, on the right comes in all week. yeah so there's lots of different ways we can probably switch it around but yeah it's Twine as well to, to fit in there as well um be interesting to see how how he does it oh, can, I, can we play with 14 players as well um, that is a oh yeah, tw- God, that's fine. Um, yeah, that's gonna be a tough one actually. Um, we've I've got, I've got, got what... so talk talk about the um forest at eleven because I'll just I'll just put it out um because there's a lot of quality in there, isn't there? Because even even this, this is not like the West Ham game where they've got Kudus, Bowen, Paqueta out. This is a completely different game, and I'd say probably a harder test just looking at that at that eleven. Yeah, um, I'd say so. Obviously, like you said, they've got a World Cup winner uh, in their squad. Montiel, Matt Turner, um, obviously ex-Arsenal. <laughs> I mean, they're like you said, I, I felt at, at lots of moments throughout the game, like with Matt Turner as well, and in the West Ham game, we saw the pressure that we had on them um, on the back line, and they, they looked prone to some mistakes at the back. They, a lot of slipping went on. It looked like some a wet surface. Um for the players but yeah i felt like they cracked a bit under pressure and our pressing worked well other than that they have yates yeah in the midfield obviously chris wood um brilliant strike he scored that hat trick against newcastle i think it was hudson adoy um is that is he on loan or is he nah he went uh yeah permanent transfer from chelsea and then yeah they've got other Big names. Gibbs White came on at halftime. We all know him from the championship. Um, but yeah, they are a, a, a decent Premier League side. Not in the greatest form recently, but obviously um, under their new manager Nuno um, who came in now. So yeah, I think I think they could be on the up. I don't think they'll get relegated from the Premier League. Um, but yeah, obviously lots of big names in there still. So. Uh, it's always it's always helps uh, a Premier League side when you can bring a bring on a forty million pound player off the bench at half time. Uh, that's always helps, doesn't it? Um, in terms of the games, I'll just run through the chances. Not much in the way really. Tommy Conway had a chance where he, first half, where I think it was Mimetti who dragged it back, uh, and then he was in the six yard box possibly, and then he, it, it, I think my 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 friend said it took a deflection, but I don't think it did. Um, I haven't seen it back. I don't think it did, and he just missed it. Um, so that one was a, possibly our big chance. And then Campring had a chance for us in the second half as well, didn't he? So, yeah, talk us through that. Which one was the Campring one? Second half, where he, on the counter-attack, Cornick puts it all... Cornick, Cornick bursts Oh, through. OK, yeah. So and I was then... going to mention that as well. Yeah, I think three of our... I think we had three main clear-cut chances. We We didn't have a shot on target throughout the whole game um we did have the majority of the shots um we definitely should have done um i think the conway one yeah first half it is a bit disappointing um because i think he could have opened in himself up a bit and put it far it's the far corner it was brilliant from Ameti, i thought um to find him that was a close opportunity but yeah he put, puts it wide Another chance, Zach Viner doing Zach Viner things. Um, little cheeky, brilliant run um, through the yeah the Nottingham defence, and then I thought he should have taken a shot. To be honest, um, I thought that was it, it was on for him, but he decided to, to play um, Tommy in, and then I think the angle was just a bit too tight. I think it went out for a corner in the end. Um, other than those two, there was. A really big chance in the second half. I mean, that 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 whole first half in general was just complete dominance for us. We had the majority of the possession. I'm not sure exactly how much. Well, I mean, it ended 50-50. The, uh, uh, we had fifty-five percent. We had fifty-five percent in the first half, so they had fifty-five percent okay. in the second half. Quick maths. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we we had um. A bit more for the ball, and I, we just we just looked dominant. I thought the passes were sharp. We looked like we were creating. A few good chances, just again, just that that final lack of attacking quality in the third 
in the final third. But other than that, they, they didn't, for, for Nottingham Forest wise, they had a, a couple, two shots on target. I think they were both straight at Max O'Leary. Um, oh, yeah. The, well, the first one was a ball in it. It was a handball in the box um, by Chris Wood, which the referee didn't see. Um, and then it fell to, I forgot who it was now. Um, Danny one, Lowe. one of the attackers, probably Danny Lowe, and then straight to well, Max. When... And then... Oh, the straight to Max one. And then the Bob second Ryan one Yates. was... Ryan Yates. Yeah, and then the second one was quite a good ball over the top. Um, and Chris Wood jumps oh. way too early, which was quite a, a decent chance for Nottingham Forest, but Max O'Leary stayed composed and collected the ball. So either keepers, no real trouble throughout the whole game, I have to say. Um, but yeah, I thought that we, we obviously carried more of the attacking threat. We couldn't put it over, but we looked dominant. We looked confident on the ball. Um, defensively, I wasn't ever too worried, to be honest. Um, and then finally on to that chance, which I think was a really, really massive chance because beef as as cornet goes through when cornet got subbed on i was a bit like okay um brilliant but he he did really well off the counter-attack it was from a corner ran the distance of the pitch and then he plays it to pring but if you if you watch the replay naki wells is right behind pringy if pring lets that go through his legs naki's got a pretty much open goal no defender in front of him he can patch into the bottom right and and that's in. I guarantee ninety percent of the time he'd put that chance away. And when I watched it, it was so frustrating because obviously Pring probably didn't know, and maybe Naki should have called something. But if you look at the replay, the freeze frame is it's frustrating. But yeah, then Pring drags out to left hand side, and then the angle becomes just a bit too tight um, for him, and it hits the side netting again. So yeah, but that that was frustrating to watch because I saw Naki there, and I was like, oh, please let it through. But yeah. Uh, I think that was it in terms of chances in the game. I thought we were better in the first half. They were better in the second half. And as I said, when you bring on Morgan Gibbs White, always going to improve the team. Um, so, yeah, that explains that. And he was literally everywhere. He was such an annoying player to play against. At one at, In one minute, he's like on the left-hand side up the pitch, not really involved. Within, within five seconds, the ball's on the right-hand side. He's there. He's literally got the ball. Like, what? Where have you zoned in from? Um, He's literally he's been he was everywhere. Uh, he was, yeah, top, top quality, and yeah, you can see you can see you can see that Premier League class in him. Uh, hopefully, he's not there next week. If we think the rumours mm. are true, he might be off to move to Newcastle. Hopefully. Um, mm. However, yeah, they were very good in the second half. Um, no, that's a lie. They were okay in the second half. They were better. Um, we held our own to a certain extent. Didn't really trouble Max too much. Uh, or we didn't trouble Turner. At all, uh, eventually. Um, yeah. One more, yeah. one more chance. Now I remember, um, because I did, I didn't, I couldn't make it down. So I do remember quite clearly from some of the, some of the replays. But I think it was Tanner on the right hand side, in the second half in front of the South Stand, and he put, he did quite a nice run. He put a ball in, and I think Mametti was there, but he just missed a touch in front of the goal, and it came across. Um, and then I think the oh yeah yeah, yeah. I, remember that. I was down I was yeah literally right in front of it <laughs> um so yeah another missed opportunity which was frustrating um yeah we were dominant like you said we deserved the win I'd say it was a close game but I think we had more clear cut chances um but yeah it's it's a shame because I think. The fact that we were at home, that was our moment to snatch it because now we go away um, to Forest. It's going to be a different game. It's going to be a lot tougher. We've got now a couple games. We had a week break from now, but now we've got Coventry on Tuesday, then the Saturday game, then it'll be another midweek. Um, so, yeah, I think it changes things a bit. But we didn't lose. And again, an answer Premier League side. We played three games against Premier League opposition. I haven't yet to lose. Um, so, just us promoted and we'll be fine i guess um is what we're saying but uh yeah a few yellow gives, cards gives as well just gives a few pass. few yellow cards camping with a lovely challenge in the 
first I didn't know. Oh, that was that utter that that one. One. I was <laughs> laughing. I was just I just sat there going, I don't care if it's a yellow card. That's the best eye of the challenge. That's the best eye of the best <laughs> night of the challenge of the night. Um, unbelievable. <laughs> Utterly wiped him out. It was beautiful. Beautiful. He had yeah. no intention to get the ball, just wanted to take the man out. Let him know he was there. 50 something minutes into the game. Absolutely quality tackle. Unbelievable. Love that from him. Personally, love that. It was it was brilliant. It was I brilliant. want to see yeah, George we... Stan do that more. I just I just yeah. I mean he did, did it against Sheffield so United. Just, just goes utterly through him, just doesn't even look at the ball, just doesn't care where the ball is, just wants to take his shins out. It is magical. If we remember, but I think it was last season, maybe even two seasons ago. No, it was last season that um Game against Sheffield United at home, that Tanner Brexit tackle was something else, though, when he got the red card. How did he get a red card for that? How did he get a red card for that? How did he get a red card for that? I don't know. It was a I think clean challenge. We were we were down as well last minute, and he was like, fuck, yeah, he just went into it. I think he did a 180 he did, in the he end. He did not care. He just did uh, not care. Um, all right, one player great. I do want to talk about is uh, Naki Wells, uh, because... Mm. I don't want to sound I don't want to sound like a negative warning here, but I thought he was abysmal. Um he did not impact the game in the slightest. Uh and I really like Naki Wells and I think he's a I think he's clearly a love what he's clearly an unbelievable character around the dressing room. A lot of the players love him. Uh and I'm sure there's an element in that. But in terms of on the pitch, he has been god awful for a while. Um he's not scored in a long time. I know injuries have been the case for them, um, but I think his last game, last goal was Stoke at home, and that was basically handed to him on a plate. Um, where literally the ball was, <laughs> they, they rolled the back pass straight to him, and yeah, you can't miss from there. Um, I don't know about Naki Wells anymore, to be honest. Uh, I think he's aging. Um, his physicality is not, his, his physicality has never been up to it, um, but he's always been a bit of bagsman. He's not showing that anymore. Um, I'd be looking to move him on in the summer, perhaps. He has scored four goals this in 2023. Um, and two of them were penalties when we had that Hull and Sunderland penalty at the, at the beginning oh, right. of last year. So this, he's only scored two goals in the last, in the last calendar year. Um, which is, yeah, obviously not what you want to see. Yeah. He's had some injury setbacks. He's he's been a pretty good player for us. I remember that moment at QPR when he got that last minute two one winner. That was how much did we pay for him? Um, I think it was one point something. I think so. Um, really? I thought it was more than that. Um, just Naki Wells. Um, I thought it was thick end ish. Maybe I might be completely wrong. But Maybe. I don't think he, whatever um, pr whatever price tag he has paid, I don't think it's been justified over that time. And he is one of apparently well, reportedly. It says he of like, four point seven. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I think I thought it was around that. Yeah, because we paid. It was we paid for, Yeah, and it was, and he was on loan at QPR, so that might have added a little bit more as well. Oh, that doesn't surprise me. Um. He's not justified that in the slightest, I don't think. Um, Which was above his market value as well at the time. Um, yeah, yeah. He, he justified that. He's on high wages. He's not produced enough on the pitch this season, even on the man. He's not getting a regular game. He's not getting regular starts. Mm. Um, again, don't want to sound negative because I do think he's a very good at character around the dressing room. But in terms, of, we want output as a striker. He's not getting that output, and I don't think he fits into the Liam Manning system either. To be honest, I don't think. He's good enough at holding the play up. I get, you know, physicality wise, he's not anywhere near Tommy's level. Um, and he's not, a, is, is his passing ability up to it? No, I don't think so. Um, is his physicality up to it? No, I don't think so. Is his goal scoring touch there? Possibly not. Um, yeah, I'd be looking to move him on in the summer. Uh, maybe a league one side um, would be willing to take him on. I think he can still fit in a in in certain championship sides at the moment. I think he's still he's getting towards the end of end of his time, and he's been here for a while. He's played like hundred and fifty odd games for us. I feel like now five um, years, isn't it? Five, five yeah. years this January, yeah, five mm -hmm. years. 
So he's been in the club a while. I I I, I like the guy. I, he was four years. Maybe sorry, four, that. four years. Yeah, he, he was one of my favorite. I got I got him on the back of my shirt. I like I like yeah, like you said, his character is good, and he's obviously not a bad player. But yeah, like you said, recently, I mean, he hasn't lived up lived up to his price tag really, and the way we're looking like going forward at the moment um he's just not the right fit and we're looking to add another striker and we have tommy when tommy's fit he doesn't really get too much game time um and yeah i would i would be surprised if he's still with us after after this summer um yeah it is a shame but it, it happens in football players go um eventually but yeah uh especially now and i mean we've been lacking a lot of goals in general and with injuries the depth hasn't been great but it's strange i think i mentioned it before because we have right now our attacking kind of availability now with our new signings um we've got quite quite a lot of players in terms of knights mimetti sykes bell conway cornick twine maybe um yeah probably most of them and if you think we we've had the same back four for how, how many for the last like since what since Naismith got injured maybe which was which was Leeds was it after Leeds or something like that so we've had them for a while and I, our defense has been our biggest strong point um and we've done really well defensively and we've got I think still the fourth best in the championship um maybe that's wrong if you just look at goals conceded something like that we're, we're in the top six um and in terms of goals scored we're 18th um so yeah you know i feel like it's funny when we think about that and how consistent the the our defense has been so yeah great what a signing dickie was um he's been great we get going off a bit of a tangent um yeah 